Hello, my name is Brian Mercier, and I'm a professional Catholic speaker, a retreat leader, and an author. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about Game of Thrones. Should Christians watch Game of Thrones? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it acceptable? That's what we're going to be talking about. And I'm going to be giving you my opinion, but at the beginning, I just want to say that there's going to be some explicit content mentioned in this video and uh, sexual nature and such. So if you struggle with that, if you struggle with pornography in any way and you think this is going to be a temptation for you, you might not want to watch this video. Just wanted to give you a warning up front. Here we go. So can Christians watch Game of Thrones? Well, if you're asking for my opinion, I would personally say no because of all the, the bad content in there. However, what would Jesus say? I think that's a better question. What would Jesus say? Do you think that Jesus would honestly think that watching Game of Thrones is acceptable and the content that comes with it? I mean, would you personally watch Game of Thrones if Jesus was sitting right next to you on a couch? Would you personally watch that show if he was there and do you think that he would be accepting of it and the content that comes along with it? I personally think that that's really hard, if not impossible, to justify because the show is just full of things that God hates, doesn't dislike, but hates, like rape, like fornication, like adultery, incest, prostitution, and all of these other perversions of sexuality. There's a lot of things in the show, even in addition to these things, that go against God and not just a little bit. See, it's not just a little bit of nudity. There are certain shows or certain movies where there might be a flash here or there. In Game of Thrones, it's long, prolonged, graphic, and gratuitous nudity. I mean, whole scenes, you could have scenes up to a minute long of just naked women, top and bottom sometimes, just being seen. And sometimes it, the cameras zoom in and it's very explicit and it's very graphic. I watched the first episode and all I could think of in my mind was, is this directed by just a bunch of guys who are pervs and just want to see a lot of naked women for an extended amount of time? That's all I could think of. But it's not just the nudity either. I mean, look at the sex and the rape. And it's not just a little bit or a one time. It's constant. It's prolonged. It's graphic. I mean, some of these rape scenes and sex scenes are up to a minute long, almost. I think one rape scene was 46 seconds long. I mean, that's amazing. And we don't promote rape in real life. We hate rape in real life. So why do we just slap a medieval costume on some people in a show and then all of a sudden it's entertainment and then it becomes okay? I watched episode one and I was shocked at the rape and the incest and the sex and everything that comes with Game of Thrones. And everybody knows this because Game of Thrones came under fire for a lot of the sexual explicitness and rape scenes and stuff like that. And with good reason. I mean, we're Christians. We follow Jesus. I'm just curious, why do Christians watch this? How can they justify this? I couldn't personally, I mean, in some ways, if you watch later in the seasons, I heard, hear it gets really good, gets interesting with fighting and dragons and wars. But if you're a Christian, how do you get past the first episode, which had multiple sex scenes, including incest and animalistic sex and a lot of different kind of graphic and gratuitous nudity? I mean, even if you close your eyes, do you also close your ears? I mean, you have to, how do you block that out? I mean, you have to keep opening your eyes to see if it's done yet. And then, oops, nope, there's another shot. Oops, there's three women all naked. Oops, there's another one. We just keep letting these things into our eyes. In fact, in the book of Luke, Jesus says that the eyes are the lamp of the body. If you let in what is good and holy and true, if you let in what is from God, then your whole body will be filled with light. But if you let in darkness, he says how great the darkness will be and it can fill your whole body with darkness. My wife and I talked about this a bit and we were discussing it and we were trying to figure out how this could happen. I mean, we would never ever put up with rape in real life. It's hateful. It's despicable. And yet, as I said before, when you throw a medieval costume on it, it becomes entertainment and we put up with it. We justify it. We may not like it, but we watch it and we basically are saying that it's okay. And it's the same thing with the objectification of women in the show, which is off the charts. Women are objectified and beaten left and right. They're abused. And we're saying on one side of our mouth that that's terrible. But then on the other side, when Christians watch the show, they're implicitly saying that it's okay, if not explicitly, because 
Christians who hate these things wouldn't have any part in them. And by the way, I think this also goes with Fifty Shades of Grey. I really don't understand how Christians can watch Fifty Shades of Grey and a lot of the other things that we try to justify in our lives. I mean, God hates that kind of abuse. In real life, we hate that kind of abuse toward women, but in Fifty Shades of Grey, he's hot and he's rich and it becomes attractive. I mean, in a lot of ways, we've compromised our morals. I feel that we compromise our values we, for the sake of entertainment because it's fun, because it's funny, because it's entertaining, because it's romantic. We justify it. But in reality, Christ calls us to compromise not at all and to not justify at all. And I want to read you a couple of Bible verses. Then you can let me know what you think in the comment section below. Listen to these passages. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17 says this. It says, Do not love the world or the things of this world. If anybody loves this world... The love of the God the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, including lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, are not of the Father, are not of God. But they are of this world, and they are passing away along with the lusts of it. So we're being called by Scripture and by Jesus to, to hate the lusts to hate the things of this world, and to not want to participate in the things that the rest of the world does. Listen to this verse in 1 John chapter 1, 5 through 7. It says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while walking in darkness, then we lie, and we don't live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. We're called to live in the light. Jesus is light. Jesus is truth, goodness, love, purity. Game of Thrones is exactly the opposite of all of that. And it's not of God, which is why we shouldn't be participating in it, even if it's just entertainment. Listen to what this says. Ephesians chapter 5 talks about renouncing paganism and old pagan ways. It says this, But immorality, like everything you find in Fifty Shades, Game of Thrones, and other shows, this immorality and impurity, it says that this should, stuff should not even be named among you as is fitting among saints. Be sure of this, that no immoral or impure person or a covetous person, that is an idolater, will enter the kingdom of Christ and God. For once you were in darkness, but now you are in light in the Lord. Walk then as children of the light, and walk in what is found in the light, in all that is good and right and true. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, and instead expose them. St. John is calling us to walk in the light, just as Jesus is in the light. Jesus wouldn't have part in Satan. He wouldn't have part in sin. In fact, the Bible says that the world and Jesus are at enmity with each other. And one of the old colloquial definitions of enmity is to have nothing in common. You're completely separated from each other. You don't meet even in the middle. So God is here and the sinful world is here and they do not meet. And we're called as Christians to walk as Jesus walked, to talk as Jesus talked, and to act as Jesus acted. And that is including everything that we watch, everything that we listen to, everything that we read, the way we dance, the way we walk, the way we act, everything. We're called not just to talk the talk that we're Christians, but to walk the walk. Jesus says in the book of Matthew that if you only love those people that love you, what credit is there in that? I mean, even pagans love those who love them. We're called to love everyone, even our enemies. And like mind... If we only watch things of Christ, then we are like Christ. But if we watch the things that pagans watch and we talk like them, when we act like them, and we do the same sort of things, 
How can we claim to be better than the pagans? How, what sets us apart? What makes us holy? I mean, Game of Thrones is no doubtedly pornography. We're watching pornography, which Christ hates and is condemned in Scripture. It's condemned throughout Christianity because it's a perversion of sexuality, and we're watching it. And even if we close our eyes, we're tolerating it and we're supporting it. I remember Radix was an old, they're a one-man passion play. And they, they're really powerful. And during the passion play, they give all these meditations. And they said back in the ancient days of Rome, they were barbaric. They watched all this graphic, bloody murders and tortures and gladiator games. And they had all of these perversions of sex. And they were just like animals in many ways. And we rightly condemn them for that. But yet nowadays, we claim to be so much more evolved and past that. But yet we watch the same things, not in a gladiator ring, but on TV. He says in that passion play that we pay money to watch other people mortal sin. We pay money to watch other people commit grievous acts of sin against God, and we call ourselves Christians. And my brothers and sisters, this isn't a condemnation. This is a call. I mean, this is the last conversion. I mean, when we get rid of big sin in our life, mortal sins, we're now called to work on our smaller sins and our venial sins and our justifications. And one of the most rampant justifications in our lives that's really hard to uproot and say that it's wrong is our entertainment, the things we watch, the things we listen to, the things we read. These are fun. We enjoy them, which is why we really don't want to part with them. They're an evil attachment in our life. And so I want to call you to see Game of Thrones for what it really is and all the graphic nudity and evil in it. Think about it. In your mind, after this video, think about all the nudity, rape, incest, and everything else that's been in Game of Thrones and ask if it's of God. Ask if watching these things are what the Bible says, true, good, and beautiful. Or are they pornographic, sinful, and of Satan? We are Christians. If the world wants to watch that stuff, let them. We're called to rise above. We're called to live holy in an unholy world. Jesus himself said, live in the world, be in the world, but not of the world. I mean, in other words, you can live in it, but don't live as they do. We're called to be holy. And the word holy means set apart. So I'm calling you to be holy. And I want to know what you think. I want to know your comments. And feel free to put them down below. Do you agree with me? Um, not that this is really a issue of agreeing or not agreeing, but I'd still like to know your thoughts. I mean, it's clearly pornography. It's clearly wrong. It's, I don't see how Christians can justify it. But, you know, if you think that it could be, and you know, you think I'm not seeing it from a specific angle or lens, feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you think I'm right on, feel free to let me know in the comments below and feel free to share this with others because it's really important. Us Christians, we need to be Christian again, fully Christian, just like Jesus. In Matthew chapter 5, he calls us to be the light of the world, to be a light on a hill that shines to the nations and tells people to follow Christ. But how can we do that if we're compromising with darkness, if we're going back to our own sinful ways and living in darkness and flirting with darkness? Live in the light. That's what Christ called you to do. And pray for me, please, that I can live in the light as he is in the light. Because we're all on a journey and it's all a struggle. So pray for me and I will pray for you. God bless you.